This program will help you learn about scuba diving. Although it can supplement training, it cannot take the place of a complete training program. Responsible participation in recreational scuba diving requires that you demonstrate the necessary knowledge and skills and be evaluated by a qualified NAWI instructor. Before beginning this program, take a moment and prepare to fully utilize the NAWI education system. You can do this by getting the textbook, a notepad, the NAWI pen and pencil set, and the workbook ready to use. When you see the Take a Note icon, stop the program and jot down the information. It forms the basis for the final test. When you see the Open Book icon, stop the program and complete the corresponding questions or exercises in the NAWI workbook. It is also easy to refer to the textbook as the same icons appear there and point to the related and highlighted text. In this way, you'll master the information faster and you'll perform your best in the water sessions and on the final written exam. NAWI Worldwide, the National Association of Underwater Instructors, presents Master Scuba Diver, a comprehensive video that describes in depth the gear and skills you will need to become a NAWI Master Scuba Diver. Chapter 1 Diving Equipment As a certified diver, you are familiar with the basic equipment used for diving. As a NAWI Master Scuba Diver, you need to know more about the equipment you use and the equipment you might want to purchase. There are three categories of scuba, open circuit demand, semi-closed circuit, and closed circuit. Open circuit demand scuba is the most commonly used by recreational divers. A scuba system where the breathing gas is inhaled upon demand from the breathing apparatus and exhaled directly into the water is called open circuit demand scuba. Scuba cylinders are made of steel or aluminum, and there are different metal alloys of each type. They are manufactured in different physical dimensions and capacities. Every high-pressure cylinder has markings stamped into the metal on its shoulder that provides valuable information. In the U.S. system, service pressure is given in pounds per square inch, and the stated capacity is the volume of air which the cylinder contains when it's fully charged. For metric European-type cylinders, pressure is given in bars and the measured capacity is the actual internal volume of the cylinder. The test pressure marking is the pressure to which the cylinder is subjected during hydrostatic testing. For a 200-bar cylinder, it is 300 bars. For a 232-bar cylinder, it's 348 bars. On steel cylinders, you might find a plus sign after a test date. If this appears, it means that the cylinder may be overfilled by 10%. It is important to keep moisture out of a cylinder. Water will cause corrosion. In a steel cylinder, this corrosion is called ferrous oxide or rust. In aluminum cylinders, it's called aluminum oxide. A serious problem, in addition to corrosion, can result from the prolonged storage of air in a steel cylinder containing water. The oxidation process will, over time, consume some of the oxygen in the air, leaving a higher nitrogen concentration. To prevent moisture accumulation, always maintain about 20 bar or 300 psi of pressurized air in your cylinder. If a whitish mist is detected when the valve is opened, if sloshing can be heard when the cylinder is tipped back and forth, or if the air has an odor, do not use the cylinder and have it inspected as soon as possible. All scuba cylinders should be inspected externally and internally by a qualified professional at least once a year. If internal inspection reveals corrosion in a scuba cylinder, it may have to be cleaned by tumbling. The process involves filling the cylinder approximately half full of an abrasive material and rotating it for a number of hours. The standard on-off valve is known as the K-valve in the USA. The J-valve contains a spring-loaded check valve that begins to close when cylinder pressure reaches a predetermined pressure. When the lever is manually depressed, the remaining air becomes available. J-valves are not very common today. A dual valve for a single cylinder, known as a Y-valve or an H-valve, allows divers to mount two regulators on a single cylinder. Another type of valve that is becoming popular is the DIN valve, which is common in many countries outside North America. This allows a thread-on attachment of a regulator to cylinders using higher working pressure. 
high pressure air from your scuba cylinder is reduced in stages to ambient pressure. Nearly all regulators are two-stage devices. The first stage reduces cylinder pressure to an intermediate pressure of approximately 6 to 10 bar or 90 to 150 psi. The second stage reduces air to ambient or surrounding pressure. To understand the operational theory of a regulator, you need to be familiar with the types of internal regulating valves used. The fundamental types are downstream and upstream valves. A downstream valve opens with high pressure airflow. An upstream valve is one which opens against the high pressure airflow. Because of their tendency to fail in a closed position, upstream valves are rare in modern scuba regulators. The internal valve of scuba regulator first stages are available in two basic types, diaphragm and piston. The downstream second stage valve is connected to the first stage by a low pressure hose. A reduction in pressure in the second stage chamber causes the second stage diaphragm to bulge inward and depress a lever, which opens the valve and admits air into the mouthpiece until it reaches ambient pressure. As long as you continue to inhale, air will continue to flow. The main valve of a pilot valve regulator is opened and closed with air pressure rather than mechanical leverage. The regulators used today are called single hose because one hose connects the first and second stages. However, they can have many hoses attached to the first stage in both high and low pressure ports. The following are some regulator attachments. Submersible pressure gauge, high pressure, BC inflator hose, low pressure, extra second stage or octopus, low pressure, and dry suit inflator hose, low pressure. Your regulator must be rinsed after each use and the purge button must not be depressed when there is water in the second stage unless it is pressurized with air. Your regulator must also be professionally serviced annually. Coloration of the filter on the first stage of your regulator may provide clues about the condition of the scuba cylinder you are using. A greenish filter indicates corrosion from moisture inside the cylinder or dripped onto the cylinder. A reddish filter indicates rust from a steel cylinder. And a blackish filter indicates carbon dust in your cylinder from a compressor filter. Airflow may be limited in some regulators at greater depths. Some regulators may not be capable of delivering high flow rates at low cylinder pressures when two divers are breathing from it at the same time in an emergency air sharing situation. Keep the regulator out of the sand. A single grain of sand can jam the second stage lever and cause a regulator to free flow. To remedy this problem, submerge it in water, depress the purge button, and rapidly move it back and forth. Regulator performance evaluation has traditionally been based on breathing resistance or effort. This was expressed in terms of centimeters or inches of water pressure exerted by the diver to inhale and exhale through the regulator. Modern regulator performance is defined in terms of maximum respiratory work level or breathing work. The U.S. Navy defines 0.14 kilograms per milliliter at a depth of 40 meters and a breathing rate of 62.5 respiratory minute volume, or RMV, as the maximum acceptable level. Some recreational diving authorities have suggested that this value far exceeds the requirements of the average diver. Several gauges are required for diving, such as a submersible pressure gauge, a depth gauge, and a timing device. An analog instrument has one or more hands that move on a dial, while digital instruments provide a numeric information display. A surface cylinder pressure gauge is used to check the amount of air in the cylinder above water. It attaches to the cylinder valve in the same manner as a regulator to provide a one-time check of cylinder pressure. One of the most common type is a Borden movement gauge. If both ends of the tube are sealed, the tube may be used to measure external pressure. The SPG is attached to the high pressure port of your regulator. The high pressure port is larger than the low pressure ports on modern regulators. Ports are generally labeled as HP high pressure and LP low pressure. Some units use a console to incorporate other gauges along with the SPG. The SPG provides a continual readout of the air pressure in your cylinders. There are several types of depth gauges, including capillary, Borden tube, diaphragm, and electronic. The simplest and least expensive is the capillary gauge. 
A capillary gauge should generally not be used as your primary depth gauge, except perhaps in shallow water. The sealed Borden tube depth gauge is fluid filled and the end is sealed with a rubber diaphragm. Water pressure is transmitted through the diaphragm to the oil which exerts pressure on the tube. An electronic depth gauge is frequently called a digital depth gauge. These gauges are extremely accurate and easy to read without error. Other features such as a maximum depth indicator or an ascent rate indicator may be easily incorporated. Electronic dive computers are the ultimate instrument for diving activities. Some computers merely combine information that would usually require several instruments and present the information in a single digital display. Others are decompression computers that continuously calculate nitrogen pressure and ingassing and offgassing in various tissue models. These computers may allow longer dive times because they compensate for time spent at varying depths throughout a dive. As with any electronic device, there is always the possibility of operational failure. You should carry a backup depth gauge and underwater timer in case of a failure of your computer. The possibility of a computer failure is quite low, but not impossible. If your computer should fail while diving, you are to ascend immediately and perform, as a safety precaution, a decompression stop of at least 5 minutes at a depth of 5 meters or 15 feet. The preferred type of compass for diving is liquid filled. This type consists of a magnetic disc or arrow called a compass card that rests on a bearing under its center point. There are many types, designs and features of buoyancy compensators. The three basic types are called horse collar, jacket or back inflation units. All true BCs are equipped with a pressure relief valve which prevents overpressurization of the bladder. Some buoyancy compensators are equipped with a dump valve to allow rapid manual deflation of the bladder. A low pressure inflator which uses low pressure air from your regulator to inflate your BC is considered standard equipment. BCs require more than casual care. Internal rinsing is critical, especially for ocean diving, as sand and dried salt can cause wear. Dry suits are the most efficient way for a scuba diver to remain comfortable in cold water. The most popular dry suits on the market today are made from a variety of waterproof materials. The suits seal at the neck and the wrists and are equipped with waterproof zippers. Low pressure inflator mechanisms prevent suit squeeze and suit exhaust valves allow air to escape upon ascent. To be warm you must wear some type of thermal underwear underneath the suits. These suits also have no inherent buoyancy. Dry suits must be carefully maintained. Rinse the outside of your suit after each diving day, paying particular attention to the valves. Dry zippers should be lubricated with paraffin wax on the outside only. Silicone spray should never be used on dry suits or zippers. An air compressor operates on the principle of Boyle's Law. Pressure is increased by reducing volume. Air compressors are rated according to how many liters per minute or cubic feet per minute on average they can pump. Air from a compressor usually passes through two or more filters in a series. These filters remove odors and further reduce the humidity of the air, but will not remove carbon monoxide. Air is heated when it's compressed and is able to contain more moisture than when cool. Water is undesirable in scuba cylinders. Air from the final stage of a compressor is usually directed into an expansion chamber. The air may then pass directly to a fill station or through a manifold system into large storage cylinders, each equipped with a separate shutoff valve. 